Hi friends, in this video we are going to discuss about molding sand and core in point of appearing gate and engineering service. First we can see the molding sand composition. There are three basic elements. First is sand. It is taken 75 to 80%. It is used for getting record strength of the mold. Mostly we are using ordinary silica sand. Silica enables the molding sand cap capable of withstanding high temperature but it has no bond. Next is clay which will act like a binding agent to the sand particles. It is used about 15 to 20 percent. And finally water that is added 2 to 8 percent. Actual function of water here is activating the clay. In some cases water will be replaced by sodium silicate which do the same function. Now we are seeing basic types of sand. Here green sand is mixture of silica sand, clay and water. And dry sand is mixture of silica sand, clay and sodium silicate. Simple difference between these two sands are green sands have moisture content and dry sand don't have the moisture. Next type of sand is loam sand which contains more than 50% clay. Loom sand generally used for producing large castings. Additives Additives are used to enhance the property of molding sand. Very important additive is coal dust. Due to this, molding sand becomes black in color. Molten metal with high temperature, when it comes in contact with molding sand, the sand begins to dry and get, hot and get hotter. At that time, the function of coal dust mixed with molding sand is to burn and give off CO2 and H2O. Here H2O is nothing but moisture. Because of that moisture, molding sand is prevented from overheating and fusion. And other additives are starch which improves resistance to deformation of the mold and wood flour which improves collapsibility of the molding sand. And Iron oxide and aluminium oxide which improves strength of the green sand. And finally sea coal. Sea coal improves surface finish of the cast. Now we are going to see the important equipments used in casting process. First is universal testing machine. This is used for testing the green strength of the molding sand. Next is sand muller which is like a grinder to mix and prepare molding sand. Next is dielect dielectric packer is like a oven for packing core which gives the dry strength for the core. Next is jolting machine this is used for ramming the molding sand uniformly. Finally sand blaster. Sand blaster is used after producing the casting for cleaning the surface of casting. Now we are seeing one gate tuma question. We have to match column 1 and 2. Column 1 is given with equipments and column 2 is given by the process. First one is hot chamfer machine. That will be attached with the metal die casting equipment to feed the molten metal ready, ready made into the die. Next is muller. Muller is used for mixing the molding sand. And next is dielectric packer. Dielectric packer is used for packing the core that is for core making and finally sand blaster sand blaster is used for cleaning the casting so the answer is now we are going to see types of molding sand first is green sand which have the moisture content in it and next is dry sand in which the moisture is completely expelled from the sand. Next sand is facing sand. This sand only will have direct contact with hot molten metal. This sand will have additives like carbonaceous material which prevent sand from overheating and improves surface finish. Next is packing sand. This this type of sand is used in other part of mold which will not have direct contact with molten metal. So previously used sand or burned sand also can be used for packing. 
this will have refractory materials next is parting sand parting sand is a, is a pure silica sand without clay and water this will be used along parting line which will not allow the molding sand from cob and drag to have bonding and stick to each other blindly we cannot choose the molding sand it should have some properties first is porosity or permeability porosity is nothing but ability of molding sand to permit gases to flow through it molten metal contains some dissolved gases and that will be evolved during solidif solidification for ev evolving these gases porosity in molding sand is needed next is refractoriness this is ability of molding sand to withstand high temperature and next is adhesiveness the sand particle must be capable of sticking stick, sticking to other bodies particularly to molding flask that is cob and drag this property is called adhesiveness and next is cohesiveness this is just opposite to adhesiveness this is the ability of sand particle sticking to each other and which is also called as strength of the molding sand and finally plasticity or flowability plasticity is the ability of molding sand to flow around the pattern and take desired next molding sand property is green strength that is nothing but the compressive strength of molding sand this compressive strength will increase with increase in moisture content next is dry strength when the molten metal is poured into the mold the moisture content in molding sand evaporates evaporates so that sand becomes dry sand and at this stage this dry sand should have the ability to retain the mold cavity and face the bion force of liquid molten metal this is called dry strength finally collapsibility this is the ability of molding sand to decrease in volume to some extent under the compressive force developed by the shrinkage of metal during metal contraction question number 2 small amount of carbonaceous material sprinkled on the inner surface of mold cavity is called option a packing sand option b phasing sand option c green sand option d dry sand here phasing sand will be in inner surface of mold cavity which will which will have the carbonaceous material to prevent sand from overheating so the answer is option b phasing sand Question number 3 increase in water content in molding sand causes option a flowability to go through a maximum option b permeability to go through a maximum option c compressive strength to go through a maximum option d strength to go through a maximum here properties like flowability permeability and strength will go through minima for the increase in moisture content but only compressive strength will go through maxima in increase in moisture content so the answer is option c compressive strength to go through a maxima question number 4 in a green sand molding process uniform ramming leads to option a less chance of gas porosity option b uniform flow of molten into the mold cavity option c greater dimensional stability of the casting option d less sand expansion type of type of casting defect here uniform ramming will not affect the porosity only too much ramming will affect the porosity and uniform ramming will not be a cause for casting defect uniform ramming supports the dimensional stability so the answer is option c greater dimensional stability of the casting question number 5 green sand mold indicates that option a polymeric mold has been cured option b mold has been totally dried option c mold is green in color option d mold contains moisture this is very simple question green sand is the sand which contains moisture so the answer is option d mold contains moisture question number 
hardness of green sand mold increases with option a increase in moisture content beyond 6% option b increase in permeability option c decrease in permeability option d increase in both moisture content and permeability here decrease in permeability of molding sand increases the hardness of green sand mold so the answer is option c decrease in permeability question number 7 which one of the following is not a property of sand mold option a permeability option b collapsibility option c strength option d fluidity except fluidity permeability collapsibility and strength are all properties of sand mold so the answer is option d fluidity now we are going to see cores core is used to create hollow shape in casting and core is prepared separately in molding because it should have higher strength than the molding sand and core should have higher refractoriness because this core will be entirely surrounded by molten metal here we are seeing the desirable properties of core green strength dry strength refractoriness permeability collapsibility these are the properties which we have seen for molding sand also other than that we have some other properties like friability smoothness and less gas emission core sand Coarse sand is made of silica sand which is free from clay. In this, coarse silica is used in steel casting and fine silica is used in cast iron and non-ferrous alloy casting. Some of the binding agents like linseed oil, core oil are used as binders. Question number 8. Wood flour is added to coarse sand to improve. Option A. Collapsibility of core. Option B, dry strength of core. Option C, shear strength of core. Option D, tolerance on casting. We have seen wood floor is used to improve collapsibility. So, the answer is Option A, collapsibility of core. We are now seeing the types of core. If the core is in larger size, then the core will be made of green sand as like the molding sand. No need to prepare the core separately. But if the core is in smaller size and it will be entirely covered with molten metal, then the core will be made of dry sand with higher refractoriness and dry strength. Chaplets Chaplets are metallic support often kept inside the mold cavity to hold core. When the molten metal is poured inside the mold cavity, the chaplet will fuse with molten metal and become part of casting. Question number 9. Chaplets are placed between mold in order to Option A. Promote directional solidification Option B. Help allying the metal Option C. Facilitate easy removal of core casting Option D. Prevent core movement due to B and C. Here, chaplets pre prevent the core movement due to the beyond force of liquid molten metal when poured inside the mold cavity so the answer is option d prevent core movement due to beyond c now we are seeing the beyond force acting on horizontal core we can see in the diagram when molten metal is poured into the mold cavity molten metal extracts some force on the horizontal core that is nothing but beyond force Beyond force formula is weight of liquid molten metal displaced minus weight of core. Weight formula is volume into density. Here volume of displaced liquid molten metal and volume of core is same. So we can take the volume as common. So finally the formula of beyond force is volume into density of molten metal minus density of core. Now we are seeing beyond force for uniform vertical core. In uniform vertical core, the beyond force is zero as no force acts on the core. Question number 10. In sand casting of hollow part of lead, a cylindrical core of diameter 120 mm and height 180 mm is placed inside the mold cavity. 
the densities of core material and lead are 1600 kg per meter cube and 11300 kg per meter meter cube respectively the net force in newton that tends to lift the core during pouring of molten metal will be options are given below here the net force that tends to lift the core during pouring of molten metal is nothing but beyond force that we has to calculate first we has to read the question very carefully and collect the given data density of core is 1600 kg per meter cube and density of liquid lead is 11300 kg per meter cube and core is in cylindrical shape with diameter uh, 120 mm so we can take that as 0.12 meter then height is given as 180 mm so we can take that as 0.18 meter now we has to calculate beyond force in terms of newton for calculating beyond force the, that is net force formula is v into density of metal minus density of core here v is nothing but volume volume formula for cylinder is pi by 4 d square h we has to substitute this formula instead of v now we can apply capital d is 0.12 meter h is 0.18 meter density of lead is 11300 density of core is 1600 we got net force value as 19.736 kg we have got the value in kg for converting kg into newton we has to multiply by 9.81 after multiplying by 9.81 finally we got net forces 193.7 newton so the answer is option c 193.7